Yo, what's going on guys? Mush back at it with another video. Here to bring up some very interesting points made by analyst Daniel Ahmad in regards to Sony and their PlayStation releases. I know you guys love talking about PlayStation. I know you guys absolutely love PlayStation these days. Nah, but seriously, he brings up a good point that I didn't even think about in terms of regional pricing and an issue that Sony is going to face with their uh, PC releases, or they are facing right now. Go through his entire post, but as you guys watch my channel, I talk about the very obvious things. I talk about, you know, PlayStation Network account linking, I talk about the Steam reception, and I talk about things like concurrent player accounts, because those are clearly visible. A lot of you guys in the comment section have brought up things like regional price conversions and things of that nature, and that seems to be a glaring issue with PlayStation and their PC releases. So, let's talk about this, and I'll go through Daniel Mod's entire post. Spider-Man 2 is the latest Sony game to receive a PC port. It continues the strategy of extending first-party games to PC, targeting non-console owners and new geographies. However, I'd like to talk about one factor that may limit sales and is something every dev needs to know. When God of War Ragnarok launched on Steam in September, over 80% of the English language reviews were positive. However, 65% of the Chinese language reviews were negative, with CN accounting for 20% of total reviews. So why did this ha happen? The simple answer is that Chinese players have increased expectations and felt let down by Sony's efforts in the region. The game did not have a Chinese audio dub, the game did not incorporate regional pricing, and the game requires a PSN account. The game not having a Chinese audio dub is a very notable issue as more developers have focused on Chinese audio. Uh, the game requiring a PSN account, obviously, we've talked about that ad nauseum, but the regional pricing thing is a big deal as well, and Daniel Lamont continues to go on and break every individual aspect down. Many AAA and AA games have started adding Chinese voices to PC games. Many players appreciate the increased effort and praise developers that included. The reviews note that Sony has included options like Polish and German voices, but not Chinese, despite the number of Chinese speakers. Two, regional pricing is a must for any developer releasing a game on Steam, and Sony has not done this for Ragnarok. The game is priced at RMB398, which is essentially $60. For reference, Black Myth Wukong released on PC day one and was uh, priced at RMB268. That's $35 in line with those expectations. So the regional conversion, very much an issue. I don't know how this factors in with other regions. And number three, while the PSN requirement isn't a large issue given players in China can create an account, it's still an additional friction for single player game, especially as players can't use something like WeChat to log in. So talking about the PSN account linking, look, I have been of the mindset that in an alternate timeline, we weren't even getting these games on PC a decade ago. And the reality is Ubisoft, Rockstar, EA, so many publishers do require account linking for various accounts. I hate it in regards to those publishers as well, but at this point, it's like, bro, am I gonna just continue fighting this losing battle when so many publishers are doing it? Now, credit to EA, Bioware, Dragon Age Veilguard, <laughs> I, I think it's gonna be a little bit of a crap show, but as far as account linking, lack of DRM, they're doing a good job with that game. And hopefully that opens an avenue uh, in the future to lessen account linking requirements. I would argue Ubisoft, y'all are trying to build, rebuild trust with the consumer. Y'all are trying to build some goodwill with the consumer. I think if you pulled Ubisoft account linking requirement, you play account linking requirement uh, on your games, I just think that would go a long way. Uh, it wouldn't overnight rebuild your goodwill, but I think it would go a long way. And I think that's true for every publisher and... Um, and again, to reiterate, the biggest issue with PSN is that it's not available in a lot of regions, which is already stifling your own success. These factors contributed to the high number of rev uh, negative reviews for God of War Ragnarok. In summary, Chinese players have higher expectations and will be vocal if they are not happy with certain aspects of the localization. This is exasperated by the fact that Steam community is blocked in China and reviews are often treated like enhanced comment sections while Sony have made a conscious decision with their PC strategy to maximize revenue per sale and drive PSN signups. They may find themselves in a similar position with Spider-Man 2 this January. Hopefully this post is useful for all developers and publishers creating games for PC. Daniel Ahmad, great Twitter follow if you guys are using Twitter. This dude is an incredibly smart analyst and I feel like I've learned so much about uh, video game. He's not the only one, but as far as video game business goes, uh, he's a great, great follow and gives you a lot of insight as far as some of the 
finer nuances of gaming, and I think this, you know, I should have been aware about the regional price, uh, pricing issue, that is on me. And that's something so many of you guys do bring up in my comment section, being like, oh, this game has uh, whack regional pricing. I am a lot of the times looking at it from the lens of being here in the States, so like the prices are what the prices are, but I should obviously think about the other regions, and on top of that, that's why maybe recently I haven't been as hard on the PSN account linking, because I'm just like, you know, at the end of the day, at least I get to play these games, but I'll go back to the fact with the account linking, it not being available in certain regions is the biggest issue. Now let's look at God of War Ragnarok, which its all-time Steam reviews are at a mostly positive threshold, 9,100 reviews, 79% positive let us pull up god of war 2018 real quick and let's look at that game's reception overwhelmingly positive 101,000 reviews 96 percent positive i truly believe if god of war ragnarok didn't have the aforementioned issues it would be at the very least at a very positive threshold or even at an overwhelmingly positive threshold um I personally did like God of War 2018 better than God of War Ragnarok, but uh, I still thought Ragnarok was a very, very well done game. And I know the obvious issues with the game outside of the account linking, but I still thought, you know, it was a fairly good game. Um, it is now available on PC, and again, I look at it from the lens of a decade ago, if you told me that God of War was going to be available natively on PC, I would have said that you're crazy. But it is happening, I just wish, man, Sony, I, I, I think Spider-Man 2 isn't going to do as well as it could have. Spider-Man 2018, you guys, was a resounding success on PC, and I think Spider-Man 2 is going to do well, but I think it would go a long ways if you fixed up the regional pricing, and more than anything with that, um, remove the account looking requirement. I don't think they're going to do it. They're desperate to get you into that ecosystem, and it, this is not just a Sony exclusive thing. You, why do you think Ubisoft wasn't releasing their games on Steam day one? They wanted you in their ecosystem of Ubisoft Connect. They wanted you to sign up to their subscription service. They wanted you buying their games directly on their platform so they didn't have to give Steam a cut. But ultimately, we don't have transparent numbers, but... You know, I would imagine that uh, Ubisoft games were not doing as well as they could have, especially games like a Star Wars Outlaws. And look at all the money that Epic Games has sunk into creating their storefront free games. Like, every publisher, if they could have it in their ideal world, they would they would want you in their ecosystem. How long did EA pull their... Remember when Battlefield 3 wasn't available on Steam? I mean, that was back in 2011. That was a real thing. Dragon Age 2 getting pulled. I mean, I still remember those. Thankfully, EA finally back on Steam after it was back in 2019. They came back on Steam, but every publisher goes through this period of trying to desperately getting you into their ecosystem. Activision did it with freaking Call of Duty, and they came crawling back. Every publisher just needs to look at Call of Duty if you want to leave Steam. That's what's gonna, like, Call of Duty came crawling back. Like, at this point, what are we doing here? But, um, that'll do it for me. Again, give Daniel Amata a Twitter follow if you're on Twitter. Just a lot of great insight, and I think it's gonna be very interesting to see how these games do with the account linking requirement, with the regional pricing, and ultimately, Sony's bread and butter is still in the console business, but I just look at the potential revenue you could generate by releasing these games day one, no account linking, do the consumer a solid, and I don't think that would impede on your console business too much. I just think it makes so much sense. And even if it's not day one, six month turnaround, nine month turnaround, get it a little bit quicker and then uh, remove the account linking. I think that just makes so much sense. But again, I'm just a dude on YouTube. I ain't, I ain't like some highbrow executive or anything like that, but that'll do it for me. Let me know all of your thoughts in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching. I will catch you guys in the next one. Peace out.